what is software testing? We know it is a new market niche. Okay, relatively new, not, not that much new anymore, but still, still. Uh, unique market niche. Everybody can learn it. Everybody can do it uh, if he or she puts enough time and energy and, you know. But what is software testing? Software testing is basically comparing actual behavior of the software, which company is developing, actual behavior against intended behavior. How do we know that intended behavior? Well, in the ideal world, there is a technical documentation which we use to learn that behavior. Specifications, requirements, lots of different things. Um, in the real world, sometimes you have nothing. So it requires higher qualifications on your side to actually uh, be able to do that. So we compare actual against expected. Now we are saying, wait a second, but to be able to do that, what, what's involved? We are saying, well, first of all, we have to learn the product. We have to learn the product. There are many ways of learning the product. Well, technical documentation, some test procedures, test cases, uh, special training which company might provide. Um, we learn a lot from people, from managers, co-workers, lots of different ways. So we learn. By learning, we are doing some activities. You know, we, we read documentation, so we see that software, we are using the software, we are playing with that software. Uh, there is a term ad hoc testing, which means kind of no system. So I'm just doing things with no system. Um, sometimes people call it monkey testing. Slang term for that is monkey testing. Boom, 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 boom. Um, there is another term which is not uh, identical to ad hoc, but it, it is also good uh, in describing what you do when you learn software applications. So it's called exploratory testing. You, you are doing things uh, with the purpose of learning. It is not just no idea what I'm doing, ad hoc monkey stuff. No, I have a purpose. Uh, but so ad hoc and exploratory testing are the typical activities of someone who is reading the documentation or playing with the software. Uh, the more knowledge you obtain about the expected result, the, act the intended behavior of that software, um, so the more, uh, the better you know uh, how to document that. So you document your knowledge in the form of uh, test, writing test documentation. Let's say test cases, one of the types of test documentation. Test case is, is a small, uh, com uh, smallest actually component of software testing with one act of verification. So you write test cases. You say, do this, expect that. Do this, expect that. So we document that knowledge, which is important because when someone new comes, we've got the documentation, that new person doesn't have to learn that software again. We documented the knowledge. Um, when we have test cases, we can execute them. And we call it structure testing. We just follow the procedure. Uh, we can automate test cases. It's another use, usage of test cases. Um, well, we write bug reports. Whatever we do here, we learn. We do ad hoc testing, exploratory testing. We write test cases. We automate. We execute. We find problems. So. As soon as we find the problem, we report that form, uh, pr problem in the form of uh, writing a bug report, which is being submitted to uh, special software applications called bug tracking uh, applications, bug tracking software. And then when the developer says, I fixed that problem, so you go and make sure it, it is fixed. That is basically what's involved in software testing. So we learn a lot. Uh, we do test, test documentation. And we execute tests, and we uh, write bug reports when we find bugs. Okay, that is pretty much what we are doing. Again, you can look at 10 different companies, and you might see lots of differences between those 10 diff different companies. But what I just mentioned here is very common. You will find it practically everywhere. That is the most common thing, the most typical thing uh, which testers do no matter where, where they work. And uh, that 
determines what we learn in that school. So whatever people do at work, so we have to make sure we know that. We are able to do that because we have to go to the job market and offer our services. So we learn software testing methodology, which is important. If you do not understand the methodology, you don't know what to do at different stages of software development uh, life cycle. So we learn how to plan uh, for software testing and uh, how to document certain things, what types of documentation exist and how to deal with them. Um, we learn how to write bug reports. Guys, we, when you graduate from that school, you are gurus of writing bug reports because that is a skill which we cannot compromise here. When you get a job and first thing you do, you just write your very first bug report. If it is poor bug report, everybody knows who you are. Okay? So we cannot compromise on that. You are, you're going to be real good uh, bug report uh, writers or bug reporters if you, if you like it that way. Uh, test automation is a separate subject. It's not covered in our software quality assurance class. We, have, uh, we used to teach practically all the imaginable good uh, test automation tools. We used to teach visual test. We used to teach uh, WinRunner, Silk, QuickTest Pro, LoadRunner, practically all of them. Uh, in today's world, the scope of tools is, is limited. So most of what we are learning right now is uh, QuickTest Pro and Silk. And we are looking at more tools because it is a very dynamic market. More tools are coming. Mm, and that skill helps a lot when you start looking for a job. Uh, we, we learned here how to get a job because we are not in business of classes, and we will talk about it later on, but you come here to get a job. We make sure you are able to get a job. So knowledge of how to get a job is critical. So what is the value of your skills if you cannot go and get a job? Um, software testing projects. Um, in, in that particular class, we are doing three projects because we have to make sure you know how to do test cases and bug reports and all, all, all the things. And uh, we also have a um, couple of projects offered by uh, software development companies to us as a school uh, for testing. So we are a testing site for several companies. And um, I would say in between fourth and fifth week of that class, we will make sure you, you all participate in those projects. So it will give you actual experience in writing test cases and bug reports and finding bugs. It will give you lots of confidence, uh, especially when it comes to the next stage of the program when, you, when we send you to internships. So internships normally come with interviews. Company asks for three people and we send them five or six so they can choose and there will be an interview. And the uh, internships, the online internships, the projects given to the school for testing, it helps you a lot when, when you do them. Because now we have something to discuss and you know what you are talking about. So you go to internships uh, for normally two, three months. 25-30% uh, of people actually get jobs there, uh, their first jobs. Um, I would say, if you ask me, um, I would rather see you go to internship and then go to the job market. Because if you don't go to the job market, you, you still are missing that skill, that ability to go and get a job. Uh, we have other classes here. We have Unix class, um, which covers basic commands and uh, shell and Perl in application to software quality assurance. Um, in my estimation, which is very subjective, I would say it triples your exposure to the job market when you start looking for a job. If they need a guru in Unix, that class will not help you. But lots of companies um, want people with a little bit of Unix. So again, in my estimation, it triples your exposure to the job market. But again, it doesn't mean you have to go and, and take all the classes we offer here. You have to take enough for getting a job. Okay, when you get a job, so you look around, you realize uh, if you need more classes or which classes, and then you, you, you start looking. Because if you kind of explore that path of taking more and more classes. I've seen people who cannot stop taking classes for years. And it gives them zero, uh, um, zero increase of marketability. So there is a critical mass. If you get more, it, it has no value. 